Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and, this, and in this episode I am going to talk about afterburners and micro-warp drives. These are speed modules, also known as propulsion modules, that take energy from your main capacitor and use it to make your ship go faster. Uh, let me go to my fitting window, and for this episode I'm going to use an Atron class Galente frigate. And I stuffed some modules in the cargo hold. And I have an example of each of these modules. So a 1 mega newton afterburner 1, and a 1 mega newton mi micro warp drive 1. They both take capacitor energy and use it to make you go faster. There are some important differences. The afterburner is the basic module. If you right click on it and show info, you go to the attribute. You first of all go to the prerequisites tab. You'll see that it requires the afterburner skill, which in turn requires the navigation skill. If you go to the Attributes tab, you'll see that it takes 20 gigajoules to activate this, and it has an activation time of 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds it requires 20 gigajoules of energy, so this uses on average about 2 gigajoules per second. My Atron can supply 5.33 gigajoules per second, at least at my skill levels, so that shouldn't be a problem and it, incre it gives you a maximum velocity bonus of 112.5%. At least that's the basic statistic on the afterburner before I fit it to my ship. If I actually throw the afterburner on here, my skills affect the afterburner and make it better. My skill in acceleration control has increased the max velocity bonus on an afterburner 1 up to 135%. Additionally, the activation time is now 14 seconds. I believe that's the fuel conservation skill coming into play. And the activation cost is only 14 gigajoules. I believe I have a different skill. Uh, which skill is that? Let me check the navigation category. Now, the afterburner skill increases the duration. Uh, acceleration control increases the max velocity bonus. And fuel conservation reduces the capacitor need. So at my skill levels, instead of 20 gigajoules every 10 seconds, I need 14 gigajoules every 14 seconds. So I'm using half the energy per unit time to run this thing, as compared to without bonuses. The micro warp drive is a more advanced form. Uh, it has a different prerequisite. It needs high-speed maneuvering, which in turn needs navigation level 3 and afterburner level 3. So you have to train navigation and afterburner each to level 3 before you can even get started on high-speed maneuvering. And, but once you have high-speed maneuvering level 1, you can use the 1 Mega Newton Micro Warp Drive 1. Oh, by the way, uh, afterburners and micro warp drives come in three size categories. The 1 Mega Newton is for frigates and destroyers. 10 Mega Newtons is for cruisers and battle cruisers, 100 mega newton is for battleships and larger. And if you forget that, you can always go to the description tab and read the note where it says frigate class module. Now the micro warp drive, if you go to the attributes, it has a max velocity bonus of 500%. That's a lot more. A lot more than the afterburner, which uh, unfit is only 112.5%. There are some downsides. First of all, it has this thing called a signature radius bonus. What does that mean? Well, first of all, you need to be aware that your ship has something called a signature radius. This is a general measure of how big your ship is uh, from the point of view of other people's targeting systems and weapon systems. An Atron normally starts off with a 36 meter signature radius, so it's the size of a frigate. Uh, larger ships have a larger signature radius. The bigger your signature radius, the faster people can target lock you, the more easily they can hit you with turrets, the more damage you will take from oversized missiles, and the easier you are to scan down with combat probes. So your signature radius affects a lot of things. All other factors being equal, you would like your signature radius to be smaller rather than larger. So the micro warp drive makes you go really fast but it also blooms your signature radius. Right. So my 40 meter frigate 
suddenly becomes uh, suddenly gets a signature radius of 240 meters. That's on par with battle cruisers. So if ever I make any mistakes in piloting, I'm going to take battle cruiser level damage on hit points that are still only frigate size. Pop goes the frigate. The other disadvantage of micro warp drives is that it has this thing called a capacitor bonus, and for the Tech 1 micro warp drive, that's negative 25%. The size of my capacitor will drop by a quarter just because I have the micro warp drive fit. It doesn't even need to be turned on. Just fitting it and having it online will reduce the size of my capacitor. And because of the way the capacitor mechanics work, that also reduces my maximum capacitor generation rate. So here, I have a 187 gigajoule capacitor, I throw on the micro warp drive. Now I have a 140 gigajoule capacitor. Right. That could be a problem on some ships. So, that's afterburners and that's micro warp drives. Let me throw both of these on. And my fitting window says I'm not cap stable, but that doesn't take into account the fact that I can only run one of these modules at a time. So I've got the modules fit. And you know what? Let me throw on the capacitor power relays in the low slots. I don't think I need these now that I look at the numbers, but I'll have them on anyway. Let me open up the fitting window again, and let's undock. All right, I have undocked from Amar 8 Oris Emperor Family Academy. This is the second largest trade hub uh, in, after Cheetah, but anyway. So I am now in space. I'm gonna open up my fitting window. And flying in space, I have a maximum speed of 511 meters per second. And if I double click in space, my ship turns in a certain direction. I, I double click in space, there we go. And you can see your current speed here and your maximum speed here. Now let's actually turn on the afterburner. By the way, the way you tell the difference between the two icons on next to the capacitor donut, this is what an afterburner looks like. This is what a micro warp drive looks like. Notice the extra two blue circles around the thrust trail. So if I turn on the afterburner, my maximum speed goes up from 511 to 1133 meters per second. Now those of you who are mathematically inclined may have noticed, hey, wait a minute, 1133 is not a 135% increase oh, over 511. Well, let's see. 100, 1133 divided by 511 equals 2.21. So this is only a 121% increase, not a 135% increase. What's going on here? There's one other factor you need to keep in mind with these speed modules. Uh, they have this number called thrust and mass addition. Right? And notice here you have the mass of your ship, 1,164 tons. All right. I like to think of ship masses in terms of kilotons, so this is 1.164 kilotons. Frigates are 1 kiloton, cruisers are 10 kilotons, battleships are 100 kilotons, usually. So my mass is 1,164 tons. I turn on the afterburner, and that goes up to 1,664 tons. All right. Go back to showing info on the afterburner. So this is a thrust of uh, 1.5 million newtons, and I've got a mass of 1.664 million kilograms. The way the game calculates your real speed bonus, it takes this 135% let me call that uh, 1.35. It multiplies by the thrust. So that's 1.5 million. 
and then divides by your ship's mass, keeping in mind that the afterburner changes the mass of your ship while it's turned on. So this mass is 1664000 kilograms. So instead of a 1.35 bonus, it's instead a 1.21 bonus. So add 1, that gives me a factor of 2.216, multiply by 511, and I come to a maximum speed of 1132.8 meters per second. That is consistent with the rounding on the fitting window. So that's why there's a difference. By the way, if you use the wrong size of module on a ship, uh, you're going to get drastically different numbers. If you try to use a frigate afterburner on a cruiser sized ship, it's not going to do much for you because it's only 1.5 million newtons trying to work against 10 million kilograms. Your mul uh, so your max velocity bonus is going to be multiplied by about mm, one sixth. You're not going to get much out of a frigate afterburner on a cruiser. So that's how the mass affects the speed bonus that you get from the afterburner. Let's turn that off. The same rule applies to the micro warp drive. So if I turn on the micro warp drive, all right, the micro warp drive as it's fit to my ship is 600%, but then that gets multiplied again by the same factor. So 1.5 meganewtons divided by 1.664 kilotons times uh, 6, and instead of a 600% max velocity bonus, I instead have a 541% max velocity bonus. Add 1, multiply by 511, and that gives me a maximum speed of 3,274.8 meters per second. I don't know why this says 3,276 on the fitting window. Close enough. All right. So that's the speed calculations on the micro warp drive and the afterburner. Uh, some things to note about uh, the use of these modules. The mass of your ship affects a couple of things. First of all, uh, it affects how much strain you put on a wormhole when you jump through. So uh, having a micro warp drive or an afterburner turned on when you're moving through a wormhole is a good way to strain that wormhole, especially if you're a cruiser who's using a battleship-sized afterburner. The other thing to keep in mind is that it may increases the mass of your ship, which in game terms also makes you less agile. You're less able to make a turn. All right. So if I want to suddenly go in the opposite direction, Notice how quickly I can go in the opposite direction with the afterburner off. Now let's turn on the afterburner. Now let's see how fast I go I turn in the opposite direction with the afterburner on. Notice that that is a little bit slower. So, it makes you go faster, but it's more difficult to turn. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, another thing, uh, if you're going to be using a micro warp drive in combat, very important, do not slow down. Remember the micro warp drive increases your signature radius. All right, so if you need to change if you need to change direction while using a micro warp drive, make wide turns. Because if you suddenly decide you want to align to that stargate over there, right click select align, and your micro warp drive is still running, your speed drops for a moment, which makes you an easier target. Even worse is, is if you suddenly decide you want to do a 180 degree turn while still having the micro warp drive running. For a brief moment, your velocity is near zero, but you're still a battle cruiser sized target with a frigate tank. And if an enemy decides to shoot at you right at that very moment when your velocity is low, you will take battlecruiser level damage on a frigate ship and you will explode. So the, what you want to do is make wide turns. So whichever direction you're going in, double click in space, double click in space at a slightly further angle, 
double click in space in a slightly further angle, double click in space at a slightly further angle, double click in space in a slightly further angle. Very important in tackling work uh, because you want to keep your angular velocities up if you're trying to approach a turret user in a player versus player situation. Right. Uh, notice what happens if I select somebody and just select Notice what happens if I just double click in space right at a person. All right. Uh, my angular velocity is now dropping very much. Now my angular velocity is below a milliradian per second on all of these people who are outside the station. Any of them who wanted to target lock me and could hit me from 200 kilometers out, I would go boom. So you don't want to head, head at somebody straight on because you've got all these low angular velocities click at an angle so that you're spiraling in. So not only are you getting closer, you're also moving to the side. Now my angular velocity has increased to 12 mil milliradians per second on a lot of these people. Right. And as I'm getting closer, I keep adjusting my angle as appropriate. That keeps my angular velocity up. If I need to escape, and I want to get out of range of the guns before I try to align to warp, right. I can always start spiral outwards, making very wide turns, keeping my angular velocity up. Right. Double clicking in space as appropriate until finally I have something that I want to align to in front of me and I can just select the align command and I am finally aligned to it, and I can hit warp without dropping my velocity dangerously low and making an easy target. That covers afterburners and micro warp tries. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.